Welcome to our 15th annual Munch Mingle and Moo. We are so happy that you were able to join our live Zoom today. We just have a couple announcements before we get started. The Zoom is being recorded and will be posted for all families in the program to view afterwards so they can also participate. If you are not comfortable with you or your child's face being viewed in Zoom, please turn off your camera now. We are also asking that you change the name that is being shown to your child to your child's first initial and last name so we can take attendance. You can do this by clicking on the three dots in the corner of your picture and select view. Okay, well, welcome everyone. My name is Judy Siebert, and I've been the consultant dietitian here for 24, no, 25 years. And I'm joined today by I'm Megan, and I am the nutrition specialist here for Bay County. So welcome all. I think we're going to have some fun today with our theme around the world. And we're going to start first with Megan, and she's going to show us a really good treat for the summer. So we are going to be making applesauce dots. It's super easy, and I like this recipe a lot because it's easy to customize if you want. You could do it with yogurt or um, even like pudding or something, and you can add um, like little pieces of fruit or granola to it. You can really make it however you want, but we're just going to keep it simple for today. So what you'll need is a plate or a pan or something that can go into the freezer. And then in your bags, you'll have wax paper. So you can just cut it or fold it to fit the paper. And then you just open up the applesauce. And put little dots of it onto the wax paper. I'd say about the size of like a quarter. I bet you could use flavored applesauce or add cinnamon to make a mm -hmm. different taste. Yeah. I think it really you just put the little dots all over the paper. Just like that. And then you would go ahead and put this straight into the freezer for like three or four hours until they're all the way frozen. And then what comes out, it's frozen out. So it starts. Hmm. All right. What, this would be interesting with a face mask. <laughs> okay. Let's try one. That's as good or better than the popsicle. Mm -hmm. That was so good. That's an excellent, excellent idea for a snack. Yeah, it's super easy, simple, and really anybody can eat them. So yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, as soon as uh, you are on solvent, you could probably get the rest. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, now we're going to pivot, and I'm going to do my presentation. And sticking with the theme around the world. Um, we can experience all kinds of things without ever leaving our home through books and through food. And the food I chose today is an Asian type food. So uh, the Asian countries do this and it's really kid friendly. Um, we do eat with our eyes, so it's visually beautiful and, and it, it's yummy. So, so here's what we're doing. I'm going to do vegetable spring rolls. Now, I first had this in a, a Thai restaurant in Morgantown, and I loved it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever worked with rice paper before. It, it, it looks like, I don't know if, uh, what, how to describe it, cellophane. Uh, this is brown rice paper, and all you simply do is you submerge it into warm water. And this water is semi-warm. So we'll let it sit for a minute, and what happens is it'll get really um, bendable or malleable, and you can pull it. So I'm going to let it sit here for a minute while I go over the vegetable. Now, this is where you can get the kids involved. They could pick their favorite ones, um, and then if the children assemble it, they're more likely to eat it. And, and let's face it, we need to get humans to eat more vegetables, and this is a beautiful, by the way, to do it. So I have yellow bell pepper. 
I have matchstick carrots, orange. I have seedless cucumbers, green, and I have mushrooms. So people would ask me, well, what's the most nutritious vegetable? But I don't have one. Every color provides something. So the yellow provides something, the orange, you know, we say carrots are good for the eyes, the beta carotene, very true. Mushrooms are starting to be discovered as a powerhouse in nutrition. And the greens, everybody needs more greens. So I have that, and I also have, it's pickled cabbage, pickled red cabbage. So that may or may not be a, a plus with the kids, but you could certainly try. All right, so it did bob and up. And I know you probably can't see this out in TV land, but it's, it's like paper thin gel. And I'm gonna spread it out on here and put the mushroom on the bottom. And then however you care to do it, there's no right or wrong way. That's the beautiful part of this. So we'll just make it pretty with some colors. I'll add some of this. And then if you're familiar with uh, holding a burrito, that's what we're gonna do with you. Oh, you're right, I forgot the cabbage. Uh, let's just put a little bit in. I, and the reason I love pickled foods, it helps the gut. People with a whole bunch of gut issues, you want fermented foods because it actually recruits the gut. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fold it like a burrito. You know how the sides come in. And then we're going to fold it, roll it up like this. And I probably could have made it a little bit tighter, but it turned out. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I put the mushrooms as the base and I have the rest of the veggies in there. So that's a, a roll, a spring roll. And again, the children can choose to put in whatever veggies they want to try. Now, everything's better with a dip, right? So I made a peanut butter dip, and, and this is a very typical dip in the Asian culture. So how I made it is with sesame oil, uh, a very nutritious oil. It's one that doesn't clog the pipes and it has a lot of omega-3 that clears the pipes. Of course, peanut butter, kids' favorite. Soy sauce, we sweetened it a little bit with maple syrup and then we added vinegar. Now for adults, uh, I would put red pepper flakes in it. That's a typical Asian presentation. So you could put a little bit of the sauce on the side and then have the children eat it. So I'm going to make one more, just for the fun of it. And then let that soak. And then I'm wondering if, if your children would like this. Um, what do you think? I think Putting it together would make people a lot more interested in trying it. <laughs> the irony, food should be fun. We should all enjoy food. And, and it shouldn't be, we should never force a child to eat. We should never bribe them to eat. But guess what? If they see you eating it, they're more likely to try it. So I think it's a really good idea to get everybody in the kitchen, everybody centered around the food and then let the child control the portions, the choices, and it makes for a very, very pleasant dining experience. I'm going to tell you something else too. It's very important to read. We all know that. You read even what you're doing right now. But guess what? Children learn more words at the dinner table. Isn't that? I mean, I never would have thought. I thought we learned about that. And you know why? Because they, you use bigger words at the dinner table. Like you, as a nutritionist, you may talk about a vitamin or metabolism. That's not in the book. So kids have better vocabularies than he deals with families. And what I worry about is too many electronics and people are too busy doing other things. So one rule at my house, I tried to have family meals, but you could not have the TV on or your phone. It's time to um, just decompress and connect with the family. So, I'll roll up this burrito type. And it's really 
really, really flimsy, this rice paper. And it has no flavor, mainly just to hold together the roll. And that was the tightest burrito wrap I've ever done. But so there you have it, the roll. And I'm going to put it there. I don't know if you could see that. Um, could have been more colorful, but would you want to try it? Sure. All right, this should be a challenge too with our uh, face mask. <laughs> so I'm going to use the dip. And kids love to eat with their fingers. Sneak pickled red cabbage and nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And it's very crunchy within the peanut butter. Like, some, I feel like, um, I don't know, it's just a good sauce to tip it. Like, it like, kind of distracts you from the fact that you're eating vegetables. That's exactly, you summed it up perfectly. The peanut butter sauce is something that every child is familiar with, and it does kind of, it, it makes a familiar taste. With some unusual taste and it blends well together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I may finish this later. <laughs> All right. So we do have um, a few minutes, and, and I wanted to talk a little bit more uh, about family meals. So, do you, anybody out there, sit regularly, sit down regularly for family meals? And, and family meals, do not have to be formal. You don't have to have the table set. You don't have to be in the kitchen for hours. Simply, you could get a, a takeout pizza and bag salad and sit and enjoy a meal together. Um, or you could have some regularity. And what I mean by that, if you were ever raised like on Sunday, you had a particular food, uh, that tends to be a really good memory of ours. Like if you think of your favorite meal, favorite food memory, doesn't it go back to grandmother or somebody mm -hmm. who ate? So we would love to try to do that with your kids, with our kids. So maybe master your grandmother's uh, spaghetti and meatball recipe or um, meatloaf recipe or stew or whatever it was, chicken and dumplings, whatever it was that really made an impact on you, why don't you start that tradition in your house? Everybody benefits from sitting down at a meal. You eat a lot less salt, a lot less fat than if you were to go out in the restaurant and get it. Kids tend to drink water when they're sitting at the table. Um, as, as I mentioned, they have a better vocabulary. And it really lays the foundation for better health behaviors throughout the lifetime. So, I want, I'm going to challenge everybody out there that can hear us to really this summer try to make families happen more often than not. And, and like I said, it can be simple or it could be complicated or it could be the same thing every Wednesday at the evening we're going to do this it's talk, or Taco Tuesdays or, or whatever it is. Um, whatever it is, family meals, sit down at a place where there's no distractions. And what I mean by that, the TV's not on, you're not distracted by your phone, and then converse. Um, so we have conversation starters. We'll, we'll say, you know, what's your favorite animal? And, and you start that at a table, you'll, you'll hear a lot of stuff. Um, so you could either download conversation starters or, or just engage your children and hear their thoughts about the food. So, you know, you, we could talk about the colors there. We could talk about how many uh, numbers, how many mushrooms went in there. It, it's really a chance to uh, broaden your horizon. And you could talk about ethnic foods, like spaghetti, where does that come from? You could really um, just make it a great memory. Uh, we all want a head, a head start for our kids. One of the simplest things you could do is have family meals together. Um, so make it a priority. It just doesn't happen. I mean, we don't walk home and there's this meal set out. I only wish. <laughs> so, so here's what I'm going to say. The devil's in the details. And you know what I mean by that? You have to plan it. 
You have to do a shopping list. You have to have the go to the grocery store, bring it home, and then actually cook it. So that's a lot of efforts, especially in our fast paced lives or if we don't have a real interest in cooking. But if you get the children helping you pick out, uh, share the menu, uh, they're more likely to enjoy it. And like I said, if, if you want to pick one thing, of course, I'm a dietitian or, or nutritionist, we're going to say this, but the one most important thing to me is having nutritious family meals together. Uh, that way, you, you can almost guarantee your child's going to be well-nourished, happy, and probably do better on test scores. You know, you know how teachers teach test scores and we're all worried about that. I was never worried about that. Um, you know, I allow my kids to kind of develop however they develop, no stress. But one thing they can count on is one good meal a day when they get back home. So anyway, um, make food fun, uh, make it creative. Um, old time recipes, new recipes. You know what I love about the internet? Every recipe under the sun, you just Google it and, and it comes up. So you can even type like the ingredients you have at home and recipes will pop up with those ingredients. That is, did you hear that? That's fantastic. There is a website. Like you, you look at it and say, oh, I have this at home. What can I make? And it'll give you six or seven things to make. So, and you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. Eating does not have to be inexpensive. Um, actually, if you go back to basics, Cheap. Cheaper than eating now or fast food. But so, uh, yeah, I typically uh, ask for questions, but uh, can we open it up? Does anybody out there have a question or you could do, uh, you could unmute yourself or do a chat? <laughs> See somebody waving. I have a question. Uh, where do you guys get those? I don't know the the wrap thing because we've I've looked at it in stores and stuff and I can't find it. Okay, so that's a very good question. I these are brown rice spring roll wrappers I got at Walmart in, in the uh, Asian food section. So, and, and I wanted not the brown rice, I wanted the clear one so you could see it better. They didn't have that, but um, I, I got it at Walmart. So I'm, I'm gonna guess it, it's at every Walmart. Uh, but you have to, it's kind of hard to find and it's the Asian food section and they're, they are gluten-free. So if anybody's following the gluten-free diet, um, these are fine. They have 62 calories per two wrapper. So it's only 30 calories for one. And it's a very, very low carb. So if somebody's on a diabetic diet or, or a low carb diet, this is a great thing. Now you can find it, we had specialty stores, you would find it there, which we don't have in, in, in Bay County, but it's at Walmart. So next time you're there, go through the uh, Asian food. Uh, where I had it was Asian, Mexican, it had different ethnic uh, foods. Yes, probably all the one I have. Yes, yep. Yep, and, and then just go there and try it. And it's really fun. I thought, I don't know how many are in here. They are, look at all that. I must have, what, 40 in here? So, you know, they tear easy once you put them in the water. So if, if your child's wrapping it, it rips, throw another one in and, and try it again because um, they're relatively inexpensive. And my next thing, I'm gonna do it with fruit rolls, and then what child would love a fruit with a dip? So there, you can get extremely creative. You can put whatever you can put in left it over chicken in it, or rotisserie chicken with some vegetables. So there's so many things you could do. And basically with the rice paper, it's just, <laughs> it's just a vehicle to hold it. So, um, and it's kind of fun uh, to see your food as you're eating it. So yeah, I hope you can find it, but I, I found it at Walmart. Some other questions or comments? Yeah, for the peanut butter sauce, could you substitute it with the wild butter? Because my granddaughter is uh, allergic to nuts. 
Yeah, actually, absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, when I started talking about this, I thought, oh, what about peanut allergies? Because they're so prevalent. So the wow butter or the sun butter, um, I've eaten both of them. They have a great flavor, and you can absolutely do that. Yeah. And the recipe for this, I think you may have it. It's just a quarter cup of peanut butter, two tablespoons of sesame oil, which gives you a really unique flavor. I use it all the time in my stir fries. Um, so you may want to invest in it. It's really good and healthy. This was supposed to be red wine vinegar, but I used white wine because that's all I had. A little bit of syrup. If you're watching sugar, you could always cut this in half. It was two tablespoons of this, two tablespoons of that, two tablespoons of this, and then a little bit of soy sauce. Now, soy sauce is not gluten-free, just FYI. Uh, which is a bummer, but it adds um, a, a little bit of saltiness, and, and it's just the salt. The sauce really makes it. But yeah, certainly uh, substitute a safe uh, nut butter. And, and there's so many nut butters. There's there's almond butter. There's um, soy, uh, sunflower, and a couple of cashew uh, butter. Cashew butter was good too. So. They're expensive, but when you have an allergy in the house, it's kind of worth it. So. How about some other questions, guys? Yeah, so um, this summer, well, so, I, I, I'm a positive person, but let me tell you, this year and a half has been really tough on families. It's been especially tough on children with COVID. So I am going, I, I did a lot of research to see if there were any studies out about the effects of COVID on children's health. There's a whole bunch right now in um, Europe, because it, especially Italy, because it, it was, it hit there first. So, so Italy has some studies and, and the news is not particularly good. Um, so, they analyzed the diets of children in COVID, and guess what? Think of it, like if I was home, well, I was home, and I, I know my diet I thought would improve, but I have constant access to foods and, and a little bit of stress, and a little bit of boredom, and that never turns out well. So here's what happened. When they looked at children's diets, the diets were very high in sugary drinks. The diets were high in processed foods, which are inflammatory. Um, the diet was high in, or excuse me, it was very low in fruits and vegetables. And, and this is just a reality, screen time for children went up 4.8 hours a day. They, they were on their screens 4.8 hours a day more. So just by that, you know, the activity went down um, and then the diet actually, and nutrition went down. So they are predicting, I cannot wait till everything's back to normal. And I, I think Monday we may even look um, the mask mandate. But when it gets back to normal, we get our children back in school. It, it, it was your challenge now at home, and it's our challenge when they're in our care, to really double down on good nutrition, double down on activity. Kids are very, very resilient. So if they got used to sitting at home and, and maybe drinking a sugary drink, they fall in line when a sugary drink isn't there. Um, maybe they got used to screen time. If we get them in the classroom, you know, and I invite you to come and volunteer for our classrooms, it, it's just like running around, just all this happy energy being burned off. So, so we will get back on track, but um, you have to do your part at home and we'll do our part here to try to uh, amend the last 18 months. And in case it didn't turn out great for your child in terms of sexualization or diet or exercise or sports, not to worry, we can reverse it and, and get it right back. So um, that's your challenge this summer. And um, here's, here's a key to your challenge. And, and it's, it's five, four numbers. Or numbers. So you have to remember this, and I think this went home in your bags. Five, two, one, oh. Five, two, one, oh. 
five fruits and vegetables a day. If you could get your child to have five servings, now servings aren't big because their stomachs are so small, but if you can get five fruits and vegetables a day into your child, that is probably the single best thing you could do to guarantee they're going to be healthy adults and with not chronic disease like obesity or hypertension or diabetes or heart disease or kidney disease or, or fatty liver disease, which is a really big one in my counseling. So five fruits and vegetables a day. The, the more color, the better. Um, five, two. And this was impossible during COVID, but now it is possible. Two hours or less of screen time a day. So we screen time is just a way of life now. It wasn't when I was growing up, but it is now. But if you could limit it to your children to two hours or less a day, and, and by limited, don't have it on at, at dinner, don't have a TV in the bedroom, um, and really kind of police it. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. That screen lights up their brain. It lights up my brain. I find myself getting up in the morning, and, and that's the first thing I do is scrolling through. So they figured out how to get us really wanting to go back to screen. So you're going to have to do your best to try not to let the powers that be light up their brain. You're going to have to police your own children's screen time. So five fruits and vegetables, two hours of screen time or less a day, five to one, one hour of moderate intensity running around. You know, adults, we might say an exercise program. No, for kids, it's just physical activity. It's just let them out in the yard and, and, and play catch or uh, roll a ball or whatever. They need unstructured play, 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 lots and lots of physical activity, which they didn't get many times during COVID because maybe the parent was working from home or the child was confined and couldn't even go to playgrounds or anything like that. So ramp up the physical activity. Now you may have to do it as a family, go on hikes, bikes, the pool, whatever, but really put effort into more movement for your children. So have to do this in order. Five fruits and vegetables, two hours of screen time, one hour of physical activity or activity, zero. I feel so strongly about this. Zero, zero sugar beverage. Um, that, that, again, we all love it. We'd be lying if we, did, if we said, oh, we don't want to drink lemonade or sweet tea or pop or whatever. But when you drink, especially when you're thirsty, that sugar, there's no buffer. It hits your gut. It's just this sugar rush. And with sodas, they design other stuff to put in it to light up our brains of caffeine. So really, really, really put effort into this summer. No sugary drinks. Well, how do you encourage them to drink water? Um, it's in my newsletter coming out. There's a whole bunch of tips you could do, like uh, freeze berries and ice cube, infuse water, uh, add mint, um, make, make a game of it. You know, how much water did you drink today? Have it readily accessible. Maybe have it where the child can open the fridge and grab their water. Um, but water, water, water. It's the key to health. So I am so glad that you took time out of your busy day to join us. I'm hoping uh, you could get some of the information and, and make it work in, in your, your lives and with your children. And Megan, I'll hand it over to you. Yes, we have one last message for you guys. Thank you so much for participating this year. Whether you join us live or watching this as a recording, you will soon be receiving an email with the survey. Please take a moment and complete the survey. Your feedback and comments are very important to us. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. See you guys. Bye.